Hi, this is Gore. I have with me here a year 2019 uh, Honda Jazz S variant. Uh, this Honda Jazz uh, is, a, is a continuation from the facelifted Honda Jazz that was launched sometime in 2017. Uh, this is actually the third generation uh, Honda Jazz, but it's the facelifted version. Okay, so let's look at this vehicle and see what is it all about. Okay, as in line with Honda Honda keyless entry system. Okay, so on Honda Jazz, even the S variant, you still get the uh, button down here. So press press one time to unlock the door. Uh, the car should beep three times uh, for it to unlock, and then to lock back, just press one time, and it will lock. Okay, and then I also seen uh, people just tap the back of the of the door handle to unlock the car and then in case your key fob runs out of battery there is still a, a keyless entry as your key uh, entry down here uh, this car is from so car so that's uh, I'm not given the uh, key fob because so car customer unlock the cars uh, using the app on their phone so I that part I will not be able to demo to you okay so if you look at the front here on the jazz do come with uh, halogen Reflector headlight. We have a turn signal over here. Okay, and a little uh, Honda Jazz S edition do not have any uh, fog lamp down here. Okay, and so let's look at the inside of this car. Okay, uh, let's look at the engine compartment to release the engine com to release the hood. There is a but there is a lever down here to release the hood. Okay, and then this one releases the uh, petrol tank filler. Okay, to open up the hood, locate the Honda badge, put your finger underneath here, and then pull towards the uh, driver side, and then you lift up the hood. After that, there is a latch down here, so lift up this one, and put it in there. I have to do it in one hand, because I have one hand holding the uh, phone, so... Lift it up from here and then anchor to this part down here. Okay, so you have your brake fluid reservoir down there. And then this one here is the uh, ABS pump. And a little bit to the front, you have your washer fluid reservoir. Then there's your alternator. And then, uh, okay, that is your dipstick to check engine oil level. This one here is your engine oil refill uh, filler port. Then a little bit to this side, you have your battery compartment, and then you have your fuse box down there. Uh, this car comes with a CVT transmission. So all Honda Jazz in Malaysia are launched are equipped with only um, <coughs> CVT transmission, with the exception of the Honda Jazz Hybrid, where they get seven-speed dual clutch transmission. So let's close up this car and look at the inside. Okay, at the door trim, you get a lock mechanism. Then you have your uh, door open and close uh, handle. Then you have your power window. Uh, so you have your power window control down here. This one locks and unlocks the car, the, all the doors in the car. This one locks and unlocks all the uh, power window uh, switches. We will demo this one afterwards. And then this one down here are your mirror control. Uh, on the S variant, um, you do not have the electric uh, folding mirrors. So mirrors are folded uh, manually by hand like this. Okay, so mirror folds in. And on, on the Honda, on the S edition, uh, the, turn, the side turn signal is on the fender itself. Okay, so... Okay, I'm inside the car. So... Uh, as in line with um, keyless entry, you still get the engine start stop button. So, to safely start up the car, foot off the brakes, okay, foot off the brakes, then press the, the start button once, the start button blinks red, okay, then press it a second time, okay, all the diagnostics now come up, put the foot on the brake. And then start up the vehicle. So, engine, so this is the proper way to start the car uh, without bump starting the ECU. 
Okay, so on the meter panel, you have your tachometer, you have your speedometer, and then you also have your multi-info display. Okay, so let's, uh, on the multi-info display, there's, uh, to adjust the, 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 the multi-info display, there's only one lever up here. And that, uh, as usual, the top of the multi-info display, you get your current fuel consumption. The car is not moving at the moment, so that's, so that's why you get zero kilometer per liter. Then, at the bottom, this is your fuel gauge. You have a clock up here, and then the info the information display shows uh, trip A. <coughs> okay, so uh, what we can do now is uh, press the lever once like this. Okay, the range changes. So now in, instead of displaying, um, instead of displaying the uh, odometer, they are, they are now displaying the range. Okay, then press another one. This is your average fuel consumption for trip A, and then and then one more time. This is average fuel consumption for trip B, and then one more time. When you press down here, this is to adjust the clock. So to adjust the clock, you can need twist the lever to the left to to decrease the time, and then twist it back this side to increase back the time. So adjust that that way. And then the bottom part here say 24 hour. You can change it by pressing the lever and hold it down. So you now go to off. And then this is 12 hours. Okay, 12 hours is this way. Then press it again. Hold it down to go to 24 hour. Press it one more time to turn off the clock. And then press it down here to uh, go back to 12 hours. So I found this in 12 hours. I'm going to leave it down there. Pressing one more time, it returns back to the uh, odometer. Okay, uh, this car itself uh, has only clocked 426 kilometers. Okay, so 426 kilometers clock on this car itself. So the odometer can never be reset. So uh, if you push it down and hold on the lever, you are actually resetting the trip A. So once you have trip A reset, okay, uh, range is still there. Range cannot be reset. Press one more time. Average fuel consumption also follow uh, being reset. Okay. Then uh, trip B. Trip B you can reset trip B by pushing the lever down like this. So trip B also has been reset. <coughs> okay. To reset trip B, this is for you to... Uh, what they call it for you to count uh, for you to start a fresh count on how many kilometers you have traveled in your trip so at the start of the trip you may want to press the 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 trip the reset button to reset trip b to zero um, what i always do is i i keep trip a on a uh, service interval that means after each uh, service i reset trip a and then after after every time i, I refill the car i set to I reset trip B so I can count at least uh, how many kilometers that I have traveled on this tank field this tank full of petrol but anyway there's always a range counter so the range counter shows uh, I have about maybe 60 60 percent or 70 percent of fuel so I have 328 kilometers more to go okay so this is the multi info display so I'm gonna leave it at, uh, at here because I I found the vehicle under odometer mode. Okay, so a little bit down <coughs> on the steering wheel, there are no controls on the S variant. On the E variant, you have some uh, audio controls over here. And then on that side, uh, nothing also. But on the V variant, you have audio control here. And then you have navigation control on this side. But S uh, S uh, variant don't have any, don't have any of these. S variant comes with UV thin steering wheel. However, the steering wheel uh, height can be adjusted by pushing this lever here, like this to release, and then uh, adjust the height. So this is down, and then you can push it up that way, and then once you have done that, lock the mechanism. So the steering is is uh, tilt adjustable. On the left stop, you get the uh, you get the wiper control. So for wiper control, uh, the front wiper is controlled by the main stock. The rear wiper is controlled by the knob at the end of the stock itself. So um, let's look at it. So 
um, pulling the, the lever towards you activates the fan washer and also the wiper a few times. And then if you find that the, there's some water on the fan screen, you can just lift the lever up like this. So it will lift up, it will activate the wiper once. And this is slow. Let me put some water on the screen first, otherwise... Okay, this is slow. Slow, like this, sorry. Ah, sorry, slow is like this, sorry. Okay, this is slow. Hey, what happened? Oh, sorry. Uh, this is slow mode. Then this is uh, regular mode, and then the fast mode. But the fast mode, I need to put some water so that it doesn't damage the wiper itself. Okay, so that's the end of it. Then uh, this one activates the washer like this. Okay, so put a look at the rear screen. Water comes down. And then when you tilt this way on, the rear wiper only has one speed that is off and on. And then there is this one more notch here. Turn it this way to activate the washer like this. While the wiper is running, you can turn the wash, uh, washer on. Okay, then on the right stock, you have a uh, light control. So uh, on this car, there's no automatic headlight on or off because the S variant. So the lights are off at the moment. Then this is position light. And then these are the main beam. Okay, and uh, if you and then Honda Jazz, uh, even though the S variant, they still get the lane change feature. That means you just have to tilt the state, the just have to tilt the lever a little bit up like this to activate. This is the left lane change, and then push it down a little. This is for right hand side lane change. So lane change feature, the signal blink only three times, and of course. This is the regular signal and the regular signal like that. Okay, then for high beam, you just have to push it down. And then to flash, you just pull it towards you for flashing. Okay, so that is the light down there. There's a light control down there. Then on the center console, you do get the hazard light switch down there. And then they, get, they do get very simple. Uh, radio con uh, player so this player plays CD okay then uh, you have your controls down here I'll do a separate video review on this okay and then on the S variant they get this kind of uh, this kind of uh, aircon control but on the E and V and also the hybrid edition uh, they get the <coughs> uh, climate control they get Honda's automatic climate control so this one activates a different different mode on your aircon. So this is uh, main blower. Main blower are these two down here. That one over there for the passenger. And the last one, the driver is the one on here. Okay, this is floor. This is a main and floor. This is floor only. And then this is fan demister and the floor. So fan demister is out there. And then the last one, this is only the demister. Okay, then aircon can be turned on by turning this knob this way. This is the fan speed off, and then okay, you can hear the aircon on the uh, on the microphone. Okay, there is an aircon on off button down here. So turn off this one, turns off the air condition. The fan blowing, but it's not air conditioned air, uh, to be hot air. Okay, so press on this one, he activates back the air condition, and then this one controls the temperature. So this side is the coolest, and then if you see it to, to the other side, then it will be the less, maybe not so cold. Okay, so the, the further the further you want the marker to this side, the colder it becomes. A little bit down here, you have your rear demister on off, and then this one set between. Uh, recirculation and fresh air. A little bit down, Honda Jazz do come with a USB port down here like this. USB port and the power outlet. Okay, 
So there are two power one power plug here, one USB port down here. And the auxiliary port for the radio is this one down here for auxiliary port. Okay. Um <clears throat> apart from that, uh Honda edition Honda Jazz V edition do get a HDMI port down here, but on this car it is not that. There's some storage down there together with some cup holders, two down here. Then uh there's your CVT transmission. So Honda Jazz do get CVT transmission. So reverse neutral D and then you have sport mode and then you have low speed for the CVT itself. So for Malaysia version of Honda Jazz, um S variant, E variant, V variant gets uh CVT transmission. CVT transmission uh is a space a kind of is a kind of transmission where you get infinite number of gears because the gear ratio is controlled by two pulleys and a uh, belt. So uh, you can look at YouTube videos to explain what CVT transmission is. Okay, uh, Honda Jazz Hybrid Edition to get a seven-speed dual clutch automatic transmission. And a little bit down there, you have your some storage. Then this your handbrake, and then a little bit behind. There are some there are some storages down there. One, two, three storages down there. Okay, then you get the glove box down here. On the passenger side, you get the door lock, handle, open close handle, power window control, and then door handle, some storage uh, down there, and then the speaker is at the bottom. Okay. Then for the driver side, <coughs> you have the eco, uh, you have your eco on off button down here. So pressing it one time activates the eco mode. Okay, so eco mode activated it gets the green little uh, the leaf down there. Uh, some some people on YouTube they call it the down hijau or the green leaf. Okay, pressing it one time disables the uh, eco mode. So this one press on, got eco mode. Okay, then uh, down here, S variant only get uh, manual leveling, manual heat beam leveling. So is it level zero, and then level three. But this one you need to take some time for the lamp. Once you have selected the level, give you some time for the uh, for the light to get adjusted. Okay, so this. So we move on to here. Uh, this one I controls adjust your uh, exterior mirror. Okay, so there's a mirror out there. You can select either the left or the right mirror. Right mirror push all the way to that side, and then press in which direction you want the mirror to be adjusted. So right, left, up, down. Then to lock. Put it to the middle. So once you put to the middle, um, the thing doesn't get adjusted. Even on that side, ah, uh, uh, doesn't get adjusted because I have locked the mirror in the middle. This one locks the door, unlocks all the door. Okay, locks the mirror. Close the door properly. Uh, okay, I didn't close the door tight enough. Lock, unlock. This one uh, locks the power window, so that means only the driver window can be activated. Then the passenger side doesn't work. Okay, so we need the lock. Then only passenger window can be activated. Okay, so uh, the driver side window activates on the one push down and then one push uh full it's just he activates by one push uh movement okay okay the upper part is made is a uh, headliner is fabric then there is no uh vanity mirror on this side itself then there are two map reading lamp for both the uh, what they call it the passenger and the driver 
and then on this side there is a vanity mirror behind this uh, behind this this uh, door visor down there the rear mirror is the rear view mirror is manual dimming so this is daytime and then if you shift it down this way this is night view uh. so night view you can see the display is a bit dim based on night view this is the day view okay then you also have a lamp up here so this currently is set to door mode so that means if the door is open the light will light up okay so and then this is permanent on this door permanent off down there okay okay so let's continue so let's uh, look at the rest of the ex let's look at the rear of the car and the rest of the vehicle the car itself okay uh this is the seat control so honda jazz uh even the s variant gets the uh seat height adjuster so you increase the seat height by doing like this and then release the lower the seat by doing this this one adjust the seat back okay and then there is a bar underneath the uh the seat to adjust the position Okay, let's continue down here there is the uh you can see the vehicle vrn down here the lead here even the hrv and the rest of them you uh there is still this portion down here so lift it up you can review the vehicle uh chassis number or some other in other countries they're called the vin vehicle identity number so one more thing i forgot is there's a cup holder the, for the driver which is down here okay the back of the car okay um i have the seat adjusted to my height which i'm uh, 178 centimeters tall so i do get this much of leg room okay i do get this much of uh head room that's from my thumb up there to the finger at the bottom here and then uh yeah this car space up from here uh sorry from here from here to there that's the height that's the headroom uh, space left okay the this the seat the front seat do have the uh the headrest can be adjusted up and down and then to retract the the, the headrest push in this button all the way to lower the seat rest but i need both hands to do it because it's quite tight uh, down here okay i managed to raise the seat height to the maximum there's a maximum so maximum you just push it up from underneath here and then to retract just press the just pressing this button and then use another hand to lower the thing down so the same goes by here but then this is this one this one is on this side there's a seat pocket on the front passenger seat but there's no seat pocket at the at the driver end okay then you get your lock door hand or open and close handle door holder door handle here power window control speaker and some storage uh, down there okay then the car uh, for the seat they do get fabric seat for honda jazz s variant okay it's for the rear seat belt there are four uh, buckle down here so this is for the side this is for the middle passenger this one too is for the middle passenger and then this one here is for the side for the side belt is very easy you just have to Put it down and then buckle into here. That's it. You get a three point seat belt for the side passenger. Just press it to release. Then for the middle passenger, it's going to be a bit more difficult because the middle passenger, uh, this is where the this is where the seat belt buckle uh, is located. So put it this way to release. And then there are two buckle like this kind. There's a one with this shape and there's one with the regular shape like that. So this one you just put it down and then there is a buckle without any uh without any uh button itself so just slot this one in here it goes in only in one direction so uh there is an arrow so this arrow match with this arrow so this is the direction where it will go in then you just have to take this and then put it down here look for the one that says center so center goes into center like this then you get three points, seat belt one, two, three. To release, just press this one to release. Then to release this one, it's going to be more, more tricky 
you need to slot this into the hole down there to release this piece. Okay, let me reposition the camera so that to get this done. Okay, I've gone as far down as possible. So there is a slot down here like, like that. So what you have to do is just uh, push this buckle into the hole down there. Just hang on a while. Oh dear. Okay, I managed to get this in this position. So put the insert the buckle into the gap like this. Okay, and push it push this buckle into the hole to release it. Ah a bit difficult to do with one hand. Okay, I have managed to align it properly, so this position here like that. And just push it down, push it down into the hole like this. So like this. Uh, okay, push it down, and then this piece comes out by itself. After that, take this after that, just uh raise this one back up to here. Okay, so this one will be in this position, and then use this one to anchor into the hole up there. Okay, so uh so that's how it goes in and this is the bit more difficult uh, so that's the uh, this part down here like that okay there are also uh, down here there are uh, isofix as uh, isofix child seat uh, anchor point so it's inside this hole down here and there's another one more inside this hole down there and then on that side of the of the seat there are so there are the uh, this is the mount point and then down there, that's the mount point for the isofix uh, child seat. Okay, for the seat itself, there is the head restraint can be lifted up by um, this way. Okay, so the, that's the maximum height the rear head restraint can go. And then to lower, just pushing this, uh, pushing this button here. Okay, and. Okay, lower it down like that. That's as far down as it will go. Okay, so that's, that's the head restraint. The seat, the rear seat can be adjusted. Can be The seat have two uh, two, uh, two configurations. For tall loads, you can lift up the bottom part of the seat like this and lock by folding it down that way. So, you now get a taller load for the... You can now load taller things into the car itself. That means from the up there to the floor is to the floor of the car itself okay so once you have already uh, move out your your large uh, items that you're carrying lift up the seat this way and carefully lower the seat to lock down by itself then there's a lever there's a lever up here for you to lift up and fold down the seat back like this uh, in my Honda HRV video, I neglect to, I forgot to mention about this uh, this feature just now. So, uh, Honda HRV also do get such uh, configuration like that. Okay, so the the seat back has been lowered down. Let's lower down the other one. Okay, on this side also the same. There's a lever down here. So lift it up and then bring it down like that. So it's a one step operation. The, the seat has been lowered down this way so to give you a identification how flat it is it's almost flat except that there's a little bit gradient at, from here to here a little bit gradient like that then if you can look it's quite a long load to the back down there it's the back of the car to release the tailgate just put your finger underneath the honda badge and press the uh, trunk release uh, request so the trunk release request is actually this uh, this one down here in here so it's quite dark to see but it is that's uh, why this one cannot quite see from the camera but you can hear the sound where the boot release uh, request is done okay so the parcel shelf have two strings on this side that can be removed to uh, to lower the the parcel shelf like that 
and then the password shelf also can be removed because there is a notch like that to release so just lift it up like that and then you can put the password shelf away like that so with now i have converted this honda hr uh, this honda jazz to this maximum uh, uh good capacity okay uh for further even longer load you can roll down the you can push the uh the front passenger seat push it all the way forward and lower the seat back all the way down to get extra leg room so extra load load space so this is as big, far big as uh boot space as possible okay to return back the the password shelf so you need to align this with this both sides okay but i need both hands to do that so i will have to uh stop the video uh but anyway i'll do that afterwards because since i have the back open i can now show you the past the what's underneath here so this lift up this one then you see your tools okay you get your towing hook jack okay your nut wrench and then you have your screwdriver down here then together with your hazard signage and then you will lift up this one okay, lift up this one then you get the uh your spare tire but the spare tire is a temporary uh spare tire so you see temporary use only okay and inflate to 420 kpa or 60 psi so if you have replaced the seat uh, so if you have replaced the the tires okay the all the your main your main running tires may not fit in this groove down here so you probably have to carry the spare tire on the outside of the car is on the in the boot space itself sorry let me repeat if you have re, if you have replaced your spare tires your, your running tires may not fit in this this space down here so you have, probably have to lower the seat back and carry the uh, broken tire uh, in the boot compartment until you reach the tire shop to get it to replace so this is just a, uh, a small tire to uh, a, a spare a temporary running tires okay so honda jazz uh, s e variant uh, look at it uh, v i cannot quite remember but if you ask me to guess i think v variant still get this uh let me check it out and i'll put it in the comments below but as far as i know uh hybrid version uh do have tools do, do have uh they they don't have a spare tire they have some tools to repair the spare tire or some something like a uh, instant something like last time proton give the instant puncture repair for it something for it to pump into the tires to seal the leak something like that so that's what i read from the brochure from honda malaysia itself okay let me close everything up and return the seat to its position uh this is where i mean uh, uh, when you have when you have replaced the spare tire your running tires may have to ride over here you may have to put your running tires here because your running tires are much larger than the spare tire so this is where you probably have to put your running tires so you might want to fold down the seat so that you don't the, the tire do not soil your seat in this case Okay, to return your parcel shelf to the to the original position, align align the the pole the 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 pole there with the groove, and also on this side. And once you have done that alignment, you can then lower down the the parcel shelf like that. Okay, to return the seat to its original position, uh, make sure the seat belt is here in this position. Okay, lift up this part. And slam the, the seat on this on his back itself. Okay, there's one thing I want you to look to know is Honda Jazz, just like any other Honda itself, it has two level of uh, of uh, seat back. Okay, you can see better from this angle here. Now this one I have written and then I've lowered it to the maximum. That one I have not lowered. So if you look at the camera, okay so you will find that 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 side there is a little bit higher that is because when you low when you raise the seat okay uh you should have hold up this lever and then lower it all the way down like that if you do not if you do it like this 
okay, without lifting up the lever, yes, the seat will go in place, but uh, the seat will not be fully uh, up. So for fully up, we need to lift up like that. So once you've done that, the seat is already fully uh, up in this position. Okay, so you can anchor back the parcel shelf up there itself. Okay, now for the rear lights, you get uh, okay, these are your rear combination lamp. So you have your rear LED combination lamp for the position lamp. You have your turn signal here. And then this is your reverse sensor. Ah, sorry, uh, your reverse lamp, not reverse sensor. Sorry, uh, reverse lamp. Reverse sensor is this one down here. Okay, that's a reverse sensor. There are no rear fog lamps on this car itself. Okay, for the for Jazz S variant, you get ventilated disc brakes. And then for tires, you get 175, uh, 65, uh, 65 series, 15 inch rim. And then for the back for itself, for the back itself, you get drum brakes. Okay, you get drum brakes down here. And uh, you still get uh, 175, 65 series, uh, 15 inch uh, rims. Uh, sorry, 15 inch rims. So tire size is 175, 65 series. Okay, uh, let's look at this. Let's try out this vehicle and I'll show you the extra feature on the uh, on the car itself okay so okay so the vehicle has already started up as you can see that there's blue lights on both ends of the uh, meter itself indicating that the car is running uh, not very really efficiently on its fuel itself so because the car is not moving so this part here is in blue same like the other Honda cars, uh, except that the other Honda cars, you have the whole meter which is in the same color. So for S variant, uh, you only see both sides in blue. Okay, I have moved the car a little bit. So now, uh, now, now the car shows green color at the side of the meter of the speedometer, showing the car is running on eco mode. Okay, so I do get that much of uh, fuel consumption. That means that uh, being roughly about 12 and a half km per liter, I'm actually going very slowly along the uh, industrial park area. Okay, so okay, so if I accelerate, it will turn blue a while, and then after that it will turn back to green. Okay, so one more time, huh? So now do be very careful when you do this kind of demo. Okay, so it turns blue a while. Then it turns back to green because the blue is during acceleration and when the speed has already stabilized the uh, the surrounding that that the part the light the light there will turn green to indicate eco mode has already been restored okay similarly if i step on the brakes i slow it down i slow down i come to a complete stop at the side of the road like this okay you will find that the meat the light will change to blue indicating that uh, increase of increased fuel consumption. So fuel consumption actually has increased uh, back to zero kilometer per liter. Okay, so let's have a look at it <coughs> down here. Let me just get to the quiet space. Okay, the road is straight. So see a uh, green already, and then there's the how many kilometer per liter down there. Okay. So uh, this is so much so for Honda Jazz uh, 20, 2019 Honda Jazz uh, S variant. Uh, I hope I hope this video really helps. So uh, if you like the video, just click the like button and then click the subscribe. And then if you want to be alerted of my any new videos, just hit the bell the bell icon. Uh, until my next video, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, tomorrow is, uh, today is actually Vesa Day. Tomorrow is a replacement for Vesa Day. So happy holidays. Uh, thank you for watching and bye-bye.